Berlin U-Bahn has nine lines numbered U1 to U9. It'll be convenient for me to use this numbering even when talking about earlier times when the designations might have been different. Paradoxically, the Berlin U-Bahn started off as a largely elevated system. The first section was opened in 1902 with a length of about 10 kilometers and it only went underground for about 2 kilometers in the west. The eastern section made use of the site formerly occupied, occupied by the Zollmauer or excise wall built in the 18th century. Several stations were named after gates on this wall and thus preserved their names to the present day. While the Brandenburger Tor is the only actual remnant of this Zollmauer to still physically survive to the present day. Starting from Warschauer Brücke, the line soon crosses the spray on the Oberbaum Brücke. This bridge might look ancient, but it was actually built specifically as a railway bridge. The actual original bridge, the actual original bridge here was a watergate on the Zollmauer. There is a road at a lower level on the other side of the, the bridge. This view is looking towards the city centre as you can see from the TV tower. And soon after it enters the Schlesius Tor station, named after the city gate of the same name. And another gate gives its name to the Kottbusser Tor station. And this is Kottbusser Tor, with the general area around it sometimes being known informally as Kotti. And then there is there is another station named after a gate, the Hallisches Tor. There is a spur at Gleis Dreieck going up to Potsdamer Platz. Dreieck is the word for a triangle, Gleis just being the word for track or line. Continuing along the western section, you come to Bulowstrasse. This is Bulowstrasse station with Potsdamer Strasse running from left to right. Nowadays, this section carries the U2, but until reu reunification, there was an old tram which used to traver traverse this section between here and Nollendorfplatz, with both stations functioning as flea markets. Bulowstrasse was known as the Turkische Bazaar. Note the Lutherkirche, the Luther church, which can just, which can just be seen on the right-hand edge. And this is the tram with the Lutherkirche in the distance on Denowitzplatz. Since 2007, this has been the American church. Further west, the line goes underground for about two kilometers after Nollendorfplatz. It goes via Wittenbergplatz, which is adjacent to the Cardave department store, but so, to give it its proper pronunciation, and goes as far as the Knie, the present-day Ernst Reuterplatz, which lies on the east-west axis leading away from the Brandenburg Gate. This underground section largely travelled through Charlottenburg, which at the time was outside Berlin. In this short intro, the, the ins and outs of why Berlin was opposed to an underground section are too protracted to be discussed here. But maybe the experience in Charlottenburg gave them confidence to construct the next extension as an underground section. This was from Potsdamer Platz under the Mitter via Alexanderplatz and then onto Schönhauser Alley in Prenzlauerberg, where it yet again became an elevated section. An extension was also added underground from Wittenbergplatz to the more affluent districts in the southwest, where some stations also reflect the affluent nature of their districts, for example at Heidelbergerplatz. All these lines were actually built as a private venture by Siemens, but the local authority in Schöneberg, which was also outside Berlin at the time, did construct their own short line during this period. This leads away from Nollendorfplatz for about three kilometers. The Rathaus 
Schoenerberg Station is located at ground level in Rudolf Wilder Park. This is by virtue of the park being built in a dip. And in fact, the park was actually constructed with the help of spoil from the U-Bahn workings being tipped onto a wetland area. This particular park is part of a chain of parks which outline an earlier geological feature of the area. So far, this has been a summary of the lines built before the Great War. There have been some extensions since then, but basically, the, basically these lines form the basis of the current U1, U2, U3 and U4 lines. This diagram attempts to show the current lines superimposed on the original line. The U1 and U3 have their termini at Warsaw Brucke. West of Gleistryak, the U1 follows a parallel line through Kurfürstenstrasse, built in the 1920s, and terminates on the Kurfürsten Dam. The U3 follows the same route until Wittenbergplatz, where it veers off to the southwest suburbs. The U2 comes in from Schönhauser Allee and Potsdamer Platz and then follows the original line to the Knie stroke Ernst Reuter Platz and nowadays goes further to Ruhl Leben, close to the Olympic Stadium. Schöneberg's U4 remains as it always was. Before leaving this period, I can mention, mention a collision at Gleistreich in 1908 when a carriage fell off a viaduct and 18 passengers were killed. Again, there is not enough time in this brief introduction to describe this incident too deeply, but all reports mention excessive alcohol consumption as a factor. As a result of this incident, the lines here are no longer in the form of, of a straightforward triangle, but cross each other at different levels. This is Hamburg. Siemens, along with Berlin-based competitors AEG, were awarded a contract to build a U-Bahn system in Hamburg, and this system does have sim some similarities with Berlin. This picture shows the current U3 and one of its elevated sections along the River Elbe. More specifically, this picture shows Baumwall, an approximately 1.8 km section which runs from the Landungsbrücke, i.e. the landing stage on the river, almost as far as the Rathaus. Soon after the war, in 1920, Berlin was extended, essentially to its present-day boundaries, and thus encompassing a much larger area than before. Furthermore, the city itself began to take a greater interest in the U-Bahn. Three lines were built in the interwar years. The present-day U6 and U8 are north-south lines, while the present-day U5 led eastwards from Alexanderplatz. These lines had carriages about 35 centimetres wider than before and are classed as gross profile, large profile, while the pre-war lines are classed as Klein profile, i.e. small profile, a distinction is, which exists to this day. This map does actually show the more recent post-war situation and it shows the situation whereby the U6 and U8 started and finished in West Berlin, but ran under East Berlin mid-journey. This is the reason for the existence of Geisterbahnhofer, <coughs> i.e. ghost stations, in which trains travel through without stopping. That is apart from Friedrichstrasse, where you could enter East Berlin or you could transfer onto the S-Bahn. Going off at a tangent for a moment, I should point out that this map is incomplete with respect to the S-Bahn. The diagram shows the north-south tunnel, which is a main archery of the S-Bahn and was built between 1934 and 1939. This had its own Geisterbahnhofer, as shown by the white bars, but it did stop in Friedrichstrasse. Most tourists probably entered East Berlin by the S-Bahn, which entered and terminated in Friedrichstrasse via the Stadtbahn. The Stadtbahn is an older main archery of the S-Bahn, it runs for over 10 kilometres on an elevated section in a west-east direction. It runs to the north of the Kurfürsten Dam, through the Tiergarten to Friedrichstrasse. It continues beyond to Alexanderplatz and then onto Ostbahnhof and Ostkreuz. In their southern sections, 
The U6 and U8 straddle the site of Templehof Airport. The U6 actually ran along the western edge of the airfield, so that the airport, opened in 1923, soon had its own metro station, which was opened in 1926. The U8 runs about one kilometre to the east of the airfield, terminating on at Hermannstrasse on the Ringbahn, i.e. the circle line, which you can see here runs along the southern edge of the airfield. The Ringbahn is one of the three main arteries of the S-Bahn, along with the Stadtbahn and the North-South north Tunnel that I've just mentioned. Further east on this diagram, you can see stations on a later line, which I haven't mentioned yet, namely the U7. You can see its intersection, you can, sorry, you can see its station at Karl Marxstrasse, which we are here still in West Berlin, by the way. The U7 intersects with the U8 at Hermannplatz and runs along the northern edge of the Heisenheider Park, which you can just see just at the top, before meeting the U6 at a couple of stations. <laughs> Nowadays, the U6 runs from Tegel, although, although it never connected with the airport, through Wedding and then the western section of the Mitte district and Friedrichstrasse, and then along the western edge of Tempelhofer Felt Park, i.e. the former airfield, and goes as far as Alt Mariendorf. The U8 runs from Wittenau and Reinickendorf through the eastern part of the Mitte district and Alexanderplatz, and then to Kotti, i.e. Cottbus or Tor, and Hermannplatz, a large square on the boundary of Kreuzberg and Neukölln. It then runs down to Hermannstrasse, as already mentioned. The work under Alexanderplatz joined the building of the U5 and the U8, as well as other par, as well as other work overground, forms the background to Alexander Dublin's novel Berlin Alexanderplatz. After the war, two further lines were built. The U7 is Deutschland's longest line, which is completely underground, if you are, if you are actually interested in, in that type of thing. It has a length of almost 32 kilometres. There are probably longer lines elsewhere. I know for a fact that one of the lines in Hamburg is longer, but that is not fully underground. Again, for what is, for what is worth, for a brief period between 1984 and 1988, the U7 was the longest tunnel in the world. But on the other hand, there are obviously different types of tunnel. <laughs> the U7 runs from Rudow in the south to Spandau. Rudow is not far from Berlin Brandenburg Airport, so talk of an extension is always in the air, although you can already get to, this, get to the airport by S-Bahn. And finally, the U9 runs from the southwest to the northeast. It runs from Steglitz, or specifically Rathaus Steglitz, and terminates at Osloer Straße on the U8. The station after Rathaus Steglitz is Schlossstraße, a major shopping street in Steglitz. And the last spelling reform produces a certain contradiction on Schlossstraße. The reform of 1996 allowed geographical names to remain unaltered although the general rule is that the S set can only be used after a long vowel. The S set look like, looks like a beta when in print. So while st street signs have retained the old spelling, the U-Bahn station uses the form shown here. Why they have introduced a hyphen, I'm not too sure. <clears throat> Usually you would expect words like this to be written without a hyphen, even though you would then have three S's in a row. To complicate things a bit further, I'm led to believe that literature produced by the transport authorities might also use the S set. All the lines have now been mentioned, but I need to finish off by mentioning developments on the U5. <clears throat> if you remember, I did briefly mention the U5 as running eastwards from Alexanderplatz. During DDR times, the line was first extended from Lichtenberg to the Tier Park, i.e. the zoo, and then a 10 km extension was built to, to Hernow, which was completed in June 1989. 
The line has now also been extended westwards under the Mitter as far as, as the Hauptbahnhof, Berlin's new central mainline railway station. This section was completed in December 2020. And this is a view of its new modern station at the Museums in Zoll. The Hauptbahnhof lies on the Stadtbahn, which I mentioned a couple of times, and is less than one kilometre northwest of the Brandenburg Gate. And it's even closer to the Reichstag. The Reichstag station is known as Bundestag. The pro proposed extensions shown here have as far as I know, been definitively abandoned in favour of an extended tramway system. The trams were abolished in West Berlin, but retained in the east. And these trams are gradually creeping into the west, with the Hauptbahnhof already connected to more than one tram line. Well, thank you very much if you're still with me at this stage. Hopefully there's a link shown here to a longer video if you want more information on the U-Bahn as well as a link to the Berlin playlist that I've drawn up. And also there is a uh, brief mention of my book, Berlin, an A to Z compilation. So thank you very much and cheers for now.